is there's a number of different companies registered to his name and they're selling log cabins. Now the company that dealt with the two customers I met was called Beaver Log Cabins Limited. And it says here that this company was put into voluntary liquidation in June 2015. But what's interesting is that Trevor Watson established another log cabin company in February 2015. That was four months earlier. And looking at the details available here, the directors of the two companies are the same. The website address is still the same. The new company operates out of the same location as the company now seeking voluntary liquidation. In fact, the only obvious difference seems to be that the new company is called Beaver Log Cabins Northern Ireland Limited. So there's a slight name change there. Now that does leave me wondering why the first company was put into voluntary liquidation. Okay, so the, the Beaver Log Cabins website is very slick and very convincing. There's reviews on an independent website here. There's one post and it's from a, a woman called Annette. Oh dear. She goes on to say, horrendous experience. Inner partition walls falling down, roof sagging, leaking all around the corners, rain and wind come in all windows. You are welcome to view how bad my cabin is. Call 083. And she's actually left her mobile number here. Hi, is that Annette? Yes, Vicky. Hi, doing Annette. Connor Pope is my name. How are you? Hello, how are you doing? Good. Listen, I came across the review you posted about Beaver Log Cabins, Ireland. Tell me, was this built by Trevor Watson? Yes. Would you mind if I uh, came up and had a look? You're very welcome. Listen, I appreciate okay. that. Okay, take care. No Bye. Bye. I'm on my way to visit Annette Hunter, who lives in a remote but beautiful part of Donegal. She was also a customer of the company now seeking liquidation. Very remote. Um, it's not too bad. That feels remote <laughs> to me. Then I'm a city boy. Um, where do I start? OK. There's something like 27 holes for boats, and there's only nine in total. Okay. So, so there should be boats in all of these. But that one's missing. So it's not, it's not actually secured down. Can I go inside and have a look? Absolutely. Let's go, Thanks. yeah. yeah. It looks lovely inside. Yeah, it could have been nice. OK, so this doesn't look good. Um, no. Huge gap there. But look at all the gaps that have appeared in the wood. Oh, yeah. Oh, huge gaps. And they're all around. They're all around the place. The windows uh, let in wind and rain. Tre yes. Trevor Watson told me that the reason that that's happening is because I hadn't closed the windows properly. Annette has videos showing just how bad the leaks get when it rains. Water runs down the walls and drips from the ceiling, and they look terrible. And she claims these problems started as soon as her cabin was built. The bedroom door, it never fitted properly, so in order to close it, I had to bang it really. The wall is practically loose. An engineer uh, did a, a very detailed report, and the top half is actually lifting upwards. So the top half is actually at risk of being blown off. And you can see all the gaps in the wall here. Yeah. How it's up from the top half up, it's getting worse. There are, in fact, two official reports which address her concerns. One, by architect David Moran, states that the absence of tie rods in the structure could result in the roof lifting. There appears to be insufficient ties holding the roof to the walls and insufficient ties holding the walls to the concrete slab below. A separate engineer's report says the external walls are each held together by a threaded bar. The holes for the threaded bars are pre-drilled to allow them to be installed during construction. But the report makes clear that not all of the bars have been installed. And there is a further issue. There's no ventilation, so that as a result, um, it, it'll, get, it'll develop wood rot and because of all the water coming in. We contacted Trevor Watson about the apparent lack of ventilation. He told us that the ventilation is provided through gaps in the roof and that there is no requirement for ventilation anywhere else. We asked the same engineer to specifically examine this claim and, having visited the cabin again, he confirmed that no such ventilation has been provided. According to him, ventilation would typically be provided by an insertable vent that allows for the flow of air. But there is no such vent visible and there are no gaps visible at all in the roof. When you consider the water leaks, the issue of tie rods and the concern about the roof and the ventilation, 
it's hard not to question the quality of this cabin, especially when you think that Annette paid around €40,000 for it. And while there have been some efforts made to address the issues, these have not been successful. So this is the third story we've heard about Trevor Watson's log cabins. One of the things that Annette told us was that he really values his reputation. But I wonder, does he deserve that reputation? And maybe it's time we paid the guy a visit to see what he has to say for himself. We sent an actor with hidden cameras into the Beaver Log Cabins show site in Donegal to see what we could learn about Trevor Watson and his products. Good morning, how are you? I'm exploring options of a granny pad from my mother. Trevor invited her into his office to continue the conversation. What would something like this cost? Round about budgeting yourself 40 to 45,000. What would I get? And, and is the roof insulated floor, the windows and doors would be all the same sort of quality. Okay. It's slightly bigger than this. A living room, kitchen, and shower room. The bathroom, yeah, okay. You might have it as a non suite bathroom and access from the living area as well. It sounds like 40 or 45,000 euro will get you a very impressive bespoke residential cabin. And yet, the three customers I met paid roughly the same amount of money for something far less impressive. Okay, so we're sitting outside Beaver Log Cabins and we have somebody who's got a clear view of Trevor Watson. And what we're doing now is we're just waiting for the perfect moment to go in and ask him a few questions. So when we get the go ahead, we're going straight in. Trevor's now walking towards us. OK, we're good to go. Trevor, is it? Trevor, Connor Pope is my name. I'm from TV3, and I have a couple of questions I'd like to ask you. Specifically, I'd like to ask you about Joy Logan. Now, you built her a log cabin in Cork, and the cabin was for kids with special needs. She paid money for a heating system. Hold on a second. You just don't walk in here. It's like this. But I have some questions. I'd like... No, it's a question. I'm not going to repeat it. No, I'm sorry. I have some legitimate no. questions. No. Talk no. to me about in Cork. I'm not going to repeat it. She gave you €5,700. Trevor, she, out of my office, please. she gave you €5,700 for a kitchen. You never office, delivered please. it. And please. I wonder, could you talk office, to me about Annette Hunter? Out of my office, please. She's a woman with a life. Tre Trevor, I'm just asking you some questions. I'm not having, I'm having no conversation to you. But Trevor, these please, questions need to be answered. Please, out of my office. Trevor Watson is inside there, and uh, he won't answer any of my questions. We asked Trevor Watson about the three customers I've met and the problems they've experienced with their cabins. Having spent between 40 and 55,000 euro each, they did not expect to have issues with gaps in walls, water leaks, damp, issues with ventilation, insulation, heating systems and roofs. Trevor Watson denies he is responsible for any of these issues. He claims the cabins have adequate ventilation gaps in their roofs, that there is adequate insulation, and that there are enough tie rods. He says a lack of care and maintenance by the owners is responsible for the gaps and the water leaks. There are two sides to every story. The three customers I met have spoken of their disappointment and extreme frustration with how their log cabins have turned out. The company they were doing business with, Beaver Log Cabins Limited, is now seeking voluntary liquidation, which means the chances of further engagement or possible solutions aren't great. Trevor Watson, meanwhile, continues to trade under his new company name, Beaver Log Cabins Northern Ireland Limited. If you've been recently let down as a consumer, Connor Pope would like to help. Email pope at firebrand.ie or visit the TV3 website, tv3.ie forward slash take part.